Hello, thank you for watching. In this very short video I want to explain um, very briefly what's the typical uh, uh, patent process, what's the typical way to apply for a patent, particularly for and specifically for a utility patent, um, and in order to get a, a patent from the United States Patent and Trademark Office or USPTO. So please bear with me, I'll explain very briefly what you need to do in order to get a patent from the USPTO. The, the typical first step in, in this process is what is called a patent search and patentability analysis. Now this first step is not always required but it is recommended most of the time. Uh, sometimes the inventor for example worked in the same technological field uh, the invention pertains to and is very familiar with the technology with the prior art so maybe in that circumstance the patent search can be can be uh, uh, avoided altogether but in general again a patentability search is the first although sometimes optional first step the patent search will uh, uh, be conducted by by a patent searcher or a patent attorney and uh, will uh, look at, for example, the USPTO database and will, uh, that will provide some relevant patents and patent applications that are uh, relevant to the invention and a patent attorney may uh, then evaluate the patentability of that invention, you know, looking at uh, how close the prior art is and looking at concepts as uh, uh, novelty, obviousness, right, to assess patentability. Uh, Obviously, again, if you are a very good uh, uh, searcher when it comes to online searches, you, you could search that USPTO database online yourself and might, might even be able to evaluate the prior art to a certain extent. Although sometimes, uh, if you are not a patent professional, obviously, uh, it may be difficult to assess uh, patentability because concepts like novelty and obviousness are not that easy to understand. However, if you are very knowledgeable about your field, uh, you may be able to assess how close the prior art is and maybe have a first, first good impression as to whether or not what you think it's an invention uh, might, might uh, be patentable. So it, it's, it always helps to do some of your searches. I always recommend it to my clients. If they can do some searches, uh, it's not a bad idea to at least have some preliminary um, indication as to where the respective invention uh, stands with, with respect to the uh, prior art. So again, a patentability search and patentability analysis and opinion is the first, sometimes optional first step. Next, you can start the application process and when it comes to the utility patents, you can go about it in, in two ways. You can start with a, what is called a provisional application and this has some advantages uh, because it's less expensive than a full application called non-provisional application. So the provisional ex uh, application is it's less expensive and uh, gives you that patent pending status for 12 months. But it then expires unless, of course, before it expires, you file the non-provisional application. So, again, when it comes to utility type inventions, which you, I'm assuming you know, right, utility as opposed to design means you invented, let's say, a device uh, that works in a certain way, has a certain uh, structure and function, and solves a particular problem. So that's a utility type invention. Um, so again, you can start with a provisional application, has some advantages, um, being less expensive, giving, giving you that patent pending status for 12 months, so maybe you want to explore the market, maybe you want to uh, further develop the, the, 
invention and it's not and because it's not fully developed you don't want to file the non-provisional yet so you want to secure filing that as soon as possible and the provisional application is a very good tool to do that however the provisional application is never examined by the USPTO is basically a, a placeholder is waiting for you to file the non-provisional application and you have only up to 12 months to do that. You need to file the non-provisional application before the provisional application expires. If you don't do that, the provisional, provisional application can, uh, it will go uh, uh, dead, will expire, and you cannot extend that. You cannot extend the life of a provisional application. Uh, but again, it's a good tool to use when the budget is limited, maybe the invention is not fully developed, or third, maybe you just want to explore the market or licensing deals or talk to manufacturers, and you, have, you want to have some protection in case something goes wrong. Uh, with a provisional application, you can prove that as of the filing date of the provisional application, you are the inventor of that invention, um, and you have the rights to it. Again, if you went the provisional application route within 12 months, you need to file the non-provisional, or you can go straight to the non-provisional. When, let's say, the budget is not a problem, the invention is fully developed, and you want a patent as soon as possible. Then you will go straight uh, to a non-provisional application. And the non-provisional application is going to go to an examiner at a USPTO, and by the way, you can even expedite this process, you know, uh, and with, with what is called a fast track, and with a fast track option, or if you are older than 65 uh, years old, you may get a, some priority there as well. Um, so, again, the non-provisional goes to the examiner, because the non-provisional is the full application with claims, and fully discloses the invention and, and claims the invention is ready for examination. And the examiner was, is going to review the application, of course, and then conduct the prior art search and assess the patentability of your claims uh, laid down in the non-provisional application against the prior art. So what happens next after he does that prior art, the examiner does the prior art and conducts the patentability analysis, he can do two things. Issue what is called a notice of allowance, uh, meaning he determines from the start that all the claims are allowable and issues the notice of allowance so you are on the, on tra on the tra on track to get that utility patent. Uh, most of the time though, the examiner will issue an office action Uh, and an office action will state the reasons why the examiner is rejecting, rejecting either some of the claims or all the claims. Um, and that could be based on no, a lack of novelty, obviousness, you know, when the examiner believes the claims are too close to the prior art, if not thought exactly, the, ex the claims may be too close and in examiner's opinion, obvious over the prior art. So what happens next? is not the end of the road, an office action will require a response from your patent attorney, uh, which means reviewing the office action, uh, see what, what are the reasons why the examiner is, is rejecting the application, reviewing the prior art, reviewing the application, and see where some differences may be between the prior art and then the claimed invention see where maybe the examiner is wrong, maybe the examiner misunderstands, misunderstands your invention or the claim uh, invention, the, the, the claim language, and uh, based on what is determined uh, through that review, typically an, invent, uh, an interview with the examiner is, is happening. We, most of the time we conduct an interview with the examiner and we try to explain to the examiner where the differences are, where he might be wrong, and or maybe propose some amendments to the claim to distinguish over the prior art. Sometimes during those interviews, you negotiate with the examiners, maybe you reach a deal, and then the process forward becomes very easy after that. Sometimes there is no agreement, 
So then all the arguments and amendments have to be very well articulated in the written response uh, to uh, create a record and hopefully persuade the examiner to change his mind or who knows, maybe uh, the process will need to continue uh, at a certain point with an appeal to the Patent Trial and Appeal Board. But again, typically, if you get an office action, a response after, after review of the office action, prior art, and the application, and then interview the examiner, and a written response will have to be filed. Let's say all this effort is successful, then next you will get that notice of allowance, and after paying the issue fees, you will get that patent you are looking, uh, you are looking for. And pretty much this is the, the way you go about getting a utility patent for, for an invention that you developed and you want to get a patent for. Again, the first optional step is to do a search, an optional patentability search and analysis. Um, the next is to file an application, which, which means here you have two options, starting with a provisional, gives you that patent pending um, status for up to 12 months, or you can go straight to a non-provisional if the invention is fully developed, the budget is not a problem, and for whatever reason you want a patent as soon as possible, you can file directly the non-provisional, you can even expedite it via fast track, it gets you the examiner, um, and then you get an notice of allowance or an office action, and you fight with the examiner uh, to get that notice of allowance. Uh, until you get a patent. I hope this helps. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.